Okay, so we've already covered six different leads. We've covered the Eithoven's triangle leads, which are the three, which is lead one, two, and three. We've covered the augmented leaves leads, which uh, are formed by the Eithoven's triangle. Those are going to be AVR, AVL, and AVF. Now we've got six more. So these are called the precordial leads. Precordial means that they're uh, surrounding the heart. Harder to draw these in um, simply because uh, they're formed by six different electrodes placed around the heart, but I'll give it my best shot. So you've got the first one, which is going to be precordial lead one, and that's going to be located in the fourth intercostal space on the right side parasternal. So let's see, fourth intercostal space, um, right side parasternal. So you place that one there. Second placement for lead two is going to be the fourth intercostal space on the left side parasternal. So I'm just going to do the same thing on the left side. Um, next you've got precordial lead four is going to be your placement because you, you're going to skip three at least initially. Um, lead four is going to be in the fifth intercostal space. Uh, on the mid-clavicular line, intercostal space, MCL. MCL is going to be my abbreviation for mid-clavicular line. Find the clavicle, you're going to bisect it, that is your mid-clavicular line. Um, so you got your fifth intercostal space, mid-clavicular line. For lead three, you're going to bisect it. So find lead two, find lead four, draw a line between the two, cut it in half, so bisected. Two and four. Okay, so now let's move on to precordial lead five. Precordial lead five is going to be placed um, uh, on the anterior axillary line. So what does that mean? Well, you're going to find your axillary line. So we draw. If you're looking at the side, you find the armpit, and you find the anterior axillary line, and you're going to be placing that uh, on the fifth intercostal space. Oh, I can't spell today. Fifth intercostal space, um, ant, axe, line. What I'd recommend doing is I would recommend just Googling and finding the anterior axillary line, and then you could extrapolate from there. Just t take a picture to see if, uh, if you want a better gauge of where that's at. So here's lead one, here's lead two, here's lead four. We're going to bisect the, the two. So we're going to place lead 3 there, lead 5 is going to go there, and lead 6 is our last precordial lead, and that's going to be uh, on the mid-axillary line. So, 5th intercostal space, mid-ax line. Okay, and that's going to be directly laterally. If we had a lateral view, um, if I could draw a lateral view, I'd do that, but I cannot because my artwork is horrible. So. Um, we are going to uh, explore kind of what this means. So, first one, so, okay, I'm going to draw the midline of the body here with a different color, just to start. And then we'll draw in the heart. So, if this is midline body, we know that the precordial lead one is going to be placed on the right side. So, here's going to be the right side of the body. Here's the left side of the body. We know that precordial lead one is going to be on the right side. Lead two is going to be peristernal in the fourth intercostal space. On the left side, Lead four will place, lead five, lead six, and lead three will bisect. Okay, so let's draw in our heart. I know that's not exactly where the heart is, but uh, marker-wise, that's okay. So, lead one. Lead one is going to take a picture, since it's being placed on the anterior chest wall, what it's going to be doing is it's going to be taking a picture of the heart kind of off to the right, and it'll be, it'll be looking at the heart on the anterior side. Lead 2 is going to be placed uh, also on the anterior chest wall. All of them are placed on the anterior chest wall until you get to lead kind of like 5, 6. Um, and then as you go down, lead 3, lead 4, those, those also kind of take anterior views. When you move to lead 5 and lead 6, when you're on the anterior axillary and the mid-axillary line, you're kind of taking a lateral picture of the heart. And when I say lateral picture of the heart, I mean... So we've got a heart here, you've got 
your impulse has started, it's going to come down, it's going to split into the left and right side. If, if I'm lead one, and I'm out here, so lead one's kind of off to the side, it's taking a picture, and it's seeing the heart kind of off at a side. It's also anterior, but it's also off at a side. If I'm lead six, I'm kind of, I know I can't draw a 3D picture in 2D, but it's taking a side picture, kind of more of a posterior side picture. Um, so it, if, if you had an electrode, if lead six had a positive deflection, if they had a positive deflection, it means that the electrical impulse is going towards it. Likewise, if lead six had a negative deflection, it means that the impulse would be going away from it. And what do I mean impulse? It means that during the conduction of the heart and the propagation of the action potential, it's going to contract the muscle. If, uh, if the impulse is going towards the node, you're going to get the positive deflection, or not the node, the, the precordial lead. And if it's going away from the precordial lead, then you're going to get the negative deflection. All right. So now that we've gone over the placements and a little brief explanation of Eithoven's lead 1, 2, 3, the precordial leads, and then finally the augmented leads, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and wrap it all together to, to show why I've talked about vector forces, why I've talked about conduction, and hopefully this will give you more of a clinical picture, one, one that you can apply towards everything.